Hi, I'm Greg Caparaso. Um, this is the first lecture of Fundamentals of Bioinformatics, and the topic today will be biological information. I like to begin these lectures thinking about and talking about the central dogma of molecular biology, which is illustrated in this slide. This is really a story about information flow in biological systems. Um, the main ways um, in general that information flows in a biological system is through the processes of replication, trans, uh, transcription, and translation. And so the first circular arrow uh, in this slide is illustrating DNA replication, where DNA is used to create other DNA molecules. The top downward facing blue arrow represents the process of transcription where DNA is used to create messenger RNA molecules. The bottom uh, blue arrow in here is the process of translation where RNA is used to create uh, protein molecules. It's um, sort of a blueprint for protein molecules that is um, uh, used by the ribosome to create proteins from messenger RNA. Now there's a, a few special cases in here. So in some cases RNA uh, can be reverse transcribed into DNA. This is um, this is used for example um, by some uh, or by RNA viruses which um, will uh, uh, use some of their own enzymes and some host enzymes to um, take their RNA genome and convert that into DNA that can be used um, in the host cell to transcribe viral uh, messenger RNAs and viral proteins. Um, some RNA viruses will also replicate um, their RNA to create a new um, RNA genome um, and so that's similar to DNA replication but occurring at the RNA level. Um, so this is really a story about information transfer. There's some information, um, say a blueprint for a protein, that is encoded in DNA. That is, that information is then transcribed to a messenger RNA and then translated to a protein. Um, and so information flows throughout this system. Um, now, to relate this to how computers process information, I am going to start talking about uh, um, binary and decimal number systems. And while this might seem a little bit off topic, um, I want you to just bear with me for a few minutes um, while, while we work through this. Now, when we think about um, a decimal number, which is a number in the way that we normally think of it, um, so for example, I'll just use the number 42 as an example. Um, what you may remember from, uh, say, courses that you've taken, uh, maybe in um, middle school, maybe even elementary school, is that what this really is, when we write a number like 42 down, um, this, what we're essentially saying is that we have two places in this number. Um, we have the tens place, um, which is represented by the exponent 10 to the 1, and we have the ones place, which is represented by the exponent 10 to the 0. Um, and so when we assemble a number, like the number 42, um, what we're really saying is that this is 4 times 10 to the 1 plus 2 times 10 to the 0. Um, of course, if we were to add these up, carry this out, we would have 40 plus 2, which would give us the number 42. Um, if we were to take another number, let's say um, 3,670, um, what we would be saying here, so again, now we would have our thousands place, uh, 10 to the 3, our hundreds, 10 to the 2, our tens, 10 to the 1, and our ones, or 10 to the 0. Um, so if we were to um, expand this, this would be 3 times 10 to the 3 plus 6 times 10 to the 2 plus 7 times 10 to the 1 plus 0 times 10 to the 0. 
So we would have 3,000 plus 600 plus 70 plus 0, which of course would be 3,670. Um, so our typical number system, the decimal number system, is base 10, which basically means that each of these exponents um, is uh, a power of 10. You may have heard that computers use a binary number system. Um, and so what that means, um, and again, you've probably heard this before, but with a decimal system, um, we have um, 10 digits. And those are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And we use those to represent the numbers that we are trying to represent. With a binary system, we have two digits, and those are 0 and 1. Now, we can represent any number that uh, we can represent with the decimal system using a binary system, but it just works um, a little bit differently. Um, and so when I represent a binary number, so here I will um, write out the binary number 1, 1, 0. Now, that might look like the number 110 to you, um, but I'm telling you that this is a binary number. This is based on a base two numerical system. And so the way that we would interpret this is instead of having a ones place, a tens place, a hundreds place, a thousands place, um, which are the powers of 10, we now will be working with the powers of two. Um, and so this value here would represent the two to the zero, this value here would be 2 to the 1. This value here would be 2 to the 2. And so if we want to figure out what decimal number is represented by the binary number 110, we would do that in the same way that we were interpreting our um, decimal numbers before. And so in this case, we would say um, that this number is 1 times 2 to the 2 plus 1 times 2 to the 1 plus 0 times 2 to the 0. Um, so of course uh, we'll translate this into decimals. So this would be 1 times 4 plus 1 times 2 plus 0 times 1. And so instead of our zero our, sorry our ones, our tens, our hundreds, in a binary number, we have a ones place. Um, that would be this two to the zero. We have a twos place. That would be two to the one. We have a fours place. That would be two to the two. Um, and so if we were to um, continue converting this to a decimal number, this would be four plus two plus zero. And so this represents the number six, the decimal number six. Um, because we have a one in the fours place, a one in the twos place, and a zero in the ones place. Um, and so let's work through another example just to sort of solidify that idea in our minds. Um, so I'm just gonna sort of pick this um, more or less randomly here. Um, so I'm gonna say we have one, zero, one, one, zero. Um, so let's, um, actually let me, let me write that a little bit bigger. Um, so I'm gonna say one, zero, one, one, zero. And so just working from right to left, this would be our ones place represented by two to the zero, our twos place represented by two to the one, our fours place 
represented by 2 to the 2. Our 8th place represented by 2 to the 3. And our 16th represented by 2 to the 4. Um, so again, if we want to just convert this to a decimal number um, so we can see what this number represents in the way that we're used to thinking about it, um, the way that I would do that is I would say 1 times 2 to the 4, I'll put some parentheses in here just for clarity, plus 0 times 2 to the 3, plus 1 times 2 to the to the 2 plus 1 times 2 to the 1 plus 0 times 2 to the 0. Um, so this would give me 16 plus 0 plus 4 plus 2 plus 0. And so if I add that up, I will have the decimal number 22. And so the binary number 10110 represents the decimal number 22. Um, now, if you, um, so most commonly, like, like you know, we work in um, numbers that are in a base 10 system. Um, if we're trying to represent a number that um, may or may not be base 10, um, and so if we're, you know, uh, in a lecture like this where we're talking about different numerical systems, the convention is that we would write a number um, as NB. In this situation, N is the number and B is the base of the numerical system that we're currently working in. Um, and so for example, if I write out the following, so if I write out 10110 and put a 10 down here, that means we're talking about the decimal, the decimal number um, what do I have here? I have 10,110. If I write that same number, but specify the base is 2, that means we're talking about the decimal number 22, because I have indicated that this is a base 2 numerical system. Now, um, this should show you that um, just as we can represent any, uh, any number um, that we can represent with decimal, we can represent that with binary. Um, we could do that with other um, base systems, and so some other systems that are common in computers, another one is base 16. Um, and so you have to use some additional characters when you're working with a base 16 system. Um, we use some letters when we're doing that. Um, but just as we, uh, uh, just as we can represent um, any number, any decimal number in base 2, we can also represent any number in a base 16 system. It's really just the convention that we're using to res uh, represent these abstract concepts of numbers. Um, and numbers, um, whether they're binary, whether they're base 16, which is usually called hexadecimal, um, or whether they're decimal numbers, base 10, um, we can use those to encode numbers, um, but we can also encode any arbitrary message that we want to um, in those numbers. Um, and we can do that by uh, defining some sort of a coding scheme where we say um, what certain numbers represent. Um, the last thing I'll mention as we're talking about this um, is you may have heard um, the term bit used in the context of um, computers or in the context of binary numbers. Um, a bit 
is short for a binary digit. Um, and so B I T. Um, and so this is a single zero or one in a base two system. Um, and so we'll come back to um, that term bit um, a couple of times throughout this lecture and the next lecture. Um, but now let's talk about some of the ways, or at least one way, that computers encode information in bits. Just about anything can be encoded um, in a number. We usually think about um, when we're talking about computers um, or really anything else, we're, we talk about maybe trying to encode a message in these numbers. And the complexity of the message um, has to do with how many, um, how many different numbers can be passed. Um, and so in really like the simplest way we could think about doing this is if we have a system where we're passing just one bit of information. Um, and in that case, there's really, well, there's only two messages that we could provide because we only have access to, do, to two digits. Um, as I mentioned, a bit is a binary digit, a single zero or a one. Um, and so there's two messages that you can pass if you're sending one bit of information. Um, those two messages um, can be interpreted in different ways, um, depending on the context, like they might be interpreted as yes or no, or on or off, or simply as the number zero or the number one. Um, there are some things that you can do that are useful with passing one bit of information. Um, for example, um, you can imagine like conveying information about whether a switch is in an on or an off position. Um, you can convey that with one bit of information. Um, you could define a coding scheme, um, which basically means that whoever the sender of the message is and whoever the recipient of the message is, they agree on what the values represent beforehand. Um, and so you can imagine, um, you know, agreeing on zero representing off and one representing on. Um, and then if I were to send a message to you, um, if I were to send you the message zero or send you the message one, you would know how to interpret that. You would know that if I send you a zero, then I am telling you that something is off. If I tell you, if I send you a one, I'm telling you that something is on. Um, despite the limited amount of information that is being passed in a one-bit message, um, there are a lot of systems that will just send one bit of information. Um, for example, the thermostat in your house might communicate with your furnace through a one-bit message. Um, so if the thermostat detects um, that the temperature has gotten below your desired temperature in the house, um, it might send a signal by running some current down a wire um, and the recipient, the furnace in this case, might uh, uh, um, receive that signal and turn the furnace on. When the thermostat detects that the temperature is now where you want it to be, it can turn that current off um, and that will that signal will be sent to the thermostat which are sorry um, from the thermostat to the furnace and it'll turn the thermostat off um, and so that's really just one bit of information that is being transmitted by turning a current on or turning a current off uh, down a wire that is connecting the sender and the recipient of the message um, if you have a more, um, if you have a more complex message that you need to send, then you can do that using multiple bits. Um, and so for example, um, and I'll switch back to my notes now, um, if, we wanna, if we wanna send um, four different messages, we might use um, uh, two binary digits per message. 
So with just a single binary digit per message, um, like we just talked about, you would have your two possible messages. One of those would be zero, and in our example, we said that could send the message that the system, whatever that system happens to be, is currently off or should be turned off. Um, one could indicate that that system should be on or that system is on or turned or should be turned on. Um, so with the thermostat example, um, by turning the current on on that wire, we can essentially be sending a one or an on signal. Um, if we turn the current off, we can send a zero or the off signal. Um, if we send two digits, and so like you could imagine um, a similar system where you have two wires, where you have, um, in that case, you could have zero, 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 one, one, zero, or one, one would be your four possible messages that you could send with two bits of information. Um, and uh, if you think about how that could work, you could imagine having two wires. Um, and so if you have a current running down neither of them, um, that could be this first signal. Um, so the zero, zero could be the equivalent of no current running down either of those wires. Um, if you have a zero, one, that could be current running down the one wire, but not the other. Um, similarly, one, zero would um, swap that around. Um, the other wire has current running down it. Um, and one, one would mean that both of these have um, current running down them. Um, now, in uh, computer systems, it's um, very often um, to send messages that are based on eight bits of information. And it's so common, in fact, that we define another term called the byte, which is equal to eight bits. Um, so these now, a bit and a byte, are two units of information. Um, and so a bit, again, is a single binary digit. A byte is eight binary digits. The um, number of messages that are possible to send here in each of these systems, um, so as you can tell from this first one, um, since we're working in a binary system, we have two possible messages. Um, when we work with, uh, sorry, binary system and one bit of information, we have two messages. When we're working with this binary system and we have um, two bits of information, you can see that we have a possibility of four messages. Um, and actually, before we talk about how many are in um, eight, let me just, um, let's explore three as a next option here, and we can see if we can find a pattern. Um, so if we were um, sending, um, a th uh, if we had three bits that we could use to send a message, the possible messages that we could be sending would be zero, 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 one, um, zero, one, 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 one. All right, what am I missing here? Um, one, zero, one, and one, one, zero. Not a lot of pattern in how I came up with that, um, but you can see that that is um, all eight possible messages that we could be sending. Um, so there's a pattern emerging here um, that is telling us how many messages we're able to send based on how many digits um, we are able, uh, uh, how many digits we have available for transmitting a message. Um, and so what the pattern is 
um, is that there <coughs> um, for a uh, using a binary system there are two to the n messages oops where n is the number of digits. Sorry, my notes are getting a little bit messy here. Um, let me see if I can clean those up a little bit for you. So when we have one digit, we have two to the one equals two messages. When we have two digits, we have two to the two equals four messages. When we have three digits, we have two to the three, which equals eight messages and so with a byte if we have um, eight bits that we can send we would have two to the eight which is equal to 256 messages A historically relevant system that has been used to um, that can be used to encode messages is the ASCII system, A S C I I, um, and I have that table um, in the slide up here. Um, what you can see, so this this is um, a system that was developed before modern com computer systems. Um, it is still in use, but it's mostly being replaced with another system these days called Unicode, which can encode many more uh, characters. But this was initially designed to represent characters in the English language, as well as some control characters that um, that. Uh, were used by um, machines at the time to encode messages. Um, and so if you take a look at this table, you can see that we have numbers that um, are representing characters that you would see on a typical um, English keyboard. Um, the layout is a little bit funky, has to do with some historical um, keyboard layouts. Um, but you can see that in this table, there's initially some control characters. Um, that's what you see represented by about the decimal numbers 0 through 32. Um, only a few of those are um, still relevant for our computer systems. Um, after that, you uh, start to see some, like what we might consider like the special characters, exclamation, hashtag, dollar sign. Um, followed by the numbers, some punctuation and mathematical characters, uppercase letters, um, some more punctuation characters, um, and lowercase characters. Um, and in this table, um, you can see that there's a few different numerical systems that are being used to represent the number or uh, the different characters that we see. Um, so the characters that we're interested in are in the last column here. Um, and this table shows the decimal number that represents them, the hexadecimal, so that was that base 16 system that I mentioned before, um, the uh, hexadecimal characters that represent them, the binary numbers that represent them, and octal numbers that represent them. Octal is a base 8 numeric system. Um, and so you would have eight characters, um, zero through seven, that you're using to represent numbers. 
Um, hexadecimal is interesting. You'll see, like, if you look at the number, the decimal numbers zero through fifteen, you can see what additional characters are used in a hexadecimal number. Um, so zero through nine are used, just like in the decimal system. But then the character A represents the number ten. The character B represents the number eleven. Um, C represents 12 up to F which represents 15. Not too much to worry about there, um, just wanted to point that out because you will sometimes see hexadecimal numbers um, popping up um, if you're as you're working with computer systems. Um, and so a table like this, um, the ASCII table, is used to encode uh, or or describe an encoding scheme for messages. Um, we will, um, in, over the next few minutes, try and use some of this to encode some messages that we might want to, um, uh, we'll encode a message, and then I'll give you a minute to try and use this table to decode it. Okay, so you can see um, in this table that these messages are represented by seven bits of information. You can see that by looking in the binary column of this table, um, and they are not representing leading zeros in this table. And so if you see a number that is, say, only three bits long, um, then you can just assume that there are zeros leading up to that. Um, now, imagine um, so what I have here um, in my notes is I've written down um, six different binary numbers. Um, and this is um, a message that I'm trying to pass to you using the ASCII system. And so let's take a minute and try and decode this message. Um, and the way that we would do that um, is I just realized that I don't have a leading zero here, so I'm just going to add a leading zero um, so that all of these are um, seven uh, seven bit numbers. Um, but what you can do is you can work through each of these and try to identify the number in the table um, and that will let you know what number it is that we are trying to look up. Um, it actually looks like I had an error here so let me just erase that. Uh, I'm going to look at my notes off to the side. Yeah, and so there was not a leading zero in that one. It was one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. So I think I was missing a trailing zero there, so sorry about that. Um, and so I'll do this first one with you, um, but let's look up this number in the table. And so you can just sort of look through here. You know that this is a seven digit number that is starting with the number one, so there's no leading zeros there. Um, and so I'm just gonna look on this ASCII table where I start to see um, numbers showing up with uh, that are seven digits long. Um, that starts with the at symbol, so decimal number 64. Um, and if I just sort of look through those, I can see that when I get to decimal number 72, I see one zero zero one zero zero zero. That matches this first um, number that I have here, and so I um, will indicate that this include uh, encodes the capital letter H. Um, the next number I have here is one one zero zero one zero one. So why don't you pause this video for just a minute and look that number up in the table and then do that for all of the additional numbers that I have here. Um, and when you've done that, you will understand or you'll, you will be able to decode the message that I'm sending you. Um, so go ahead and pause, decode the message, and then come back. Okay, so um, since I wrote this message, I know what it says already. Um, and so 
if I go ahead and decode each one of these, I can see that the message that was encoded here is the word hello with some punctuation after it. Um, so I was able to decode that using the ASCII table. Okay, so that's where I'm going to leave this first lecture on biological information. When we come back next time, we are going to start relating this to biological systems. Um, we are going to talk about the four nucleotides that are used um, as the building blocks of DNA, and we'll be talking about how that is used to encode uh, messages about proteins um, via the genetic code. I will see you next time.